Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our Plant of the Week podcast brought to you by Bonide Products, family made in America. Visit Bonide.com to find a retailer near you. Each week, Plant Talk Radio's Fred Hauer focuses on a plant that would be a great addition to your landscape. Now for this week's Bonide Products Plant of the Week. Fred, your plants of the week. Well, it is plant many cultivars of same, and then I snuck in one other. Coneflower is the plant of this week. Now, mine have uh, peaked by perhaps, let's call it a half a week. Uh, there there will be flowers uh, coming, and uh, I'm going to enhance that possibility a little bit by taking off a few that have finished the bloom, the petals have fallen, and so on. Uh, I will spend a few minutes just, we'll call it deadheading this plant. Uh, and and for purposes of making the second crop or the, the continuum at least as colorful as possible. Coneflower is um, a, a very basic plant. Uh, essentially a native to this area. It is under the uh, medical name as well as its actual common name, I'm sorry, technical name, as Echinacea. Uh, I have been warned by doctors to leave it on the shelf at the drugstore, but at the same time, that's up to others. Uh, Echinacea is a tough, rugged plant, loves this time of year, handles droughty situations. Now, there is a limit even to what coneflower can put up with. But they they like the hot summer time. The purple coneflower is more or less the precedent for all of the rest of them. And then the geneticists got involved and oh my, what a bunch of different colors we can get. And and I, I don't find that as exciting as some because I, I, well, I use them a little differently. But if you want coneflower in various colors, all you have to do is look at the garden center. Uh, they are going to be a plant that runs in the two to four foot height range, pretty much a vertical plant. Full sun is their best place. They will handle drought quite well although there is always a limit, and the well-drained soil. Now, that's always consternation to some people. Uh, How can it be uh, moist enough to keep the plant going and then be well-drained? Well, all of that boils down to particle size in the soil. Uh, Do pay attention to what if the plant leaf is hanging at half-mast and still attached to the stem, do water it. Even though it's drought tolerant, it will need a little bit of help. There are 15 or more different colorful cultivars of the plant, and I suppose more coming because when the geneticists get involved and then start breeding backwards within and all the fancy things they can do by well, by understanding, then we get a terrific plant. I would call it mid-ground toward background in most flower beds at the two to four foot height range. So uh, consider it as one of the mid-summers uh, period of uh, really good color. Then, uh, I before it is completely gone, a little plant called a stilby. Now, it has bigger cousins that stand two and a half or so feet tall, various colors. But the little one I'm thinking of is is a stilby. Chinensis pumila, or, or just simply dwarf Chinese still be. Don't worry about the technical name, other than to be sure you get the right one. This little guy is about 10 inches high to the top of the leaf, and then the flower stands up on a spike about 12 to 15 inches tall, handles the shade quite nicely. Now, not deep shade, but uh, really is best planted for morning sun or or otherwise. Moist soil that is well-drained is the trick there. And then it is a mauve pink, rather rather pleasant, uh, even into the evening. It's called Stoloniferous, so it, it grows out sideways quite nicely, filling space, and uh, is good in the shade for a ground cover. Thanks again for listening to our podcast, brought to you by Bonide Products at Bonide.com. Plant Talk Radio offers other podcasts as well, including our daily Your Gardening Question podcast and our weekly Plant Talk Radio, all available on iTunes or your preferred podcast player. If you have a plant suggestion for Fred, send him an email, fred at planttalkradio.com.